In these examples, to identify any local extrema or saddle points, we're going to need to find the first derivative with respect to both x and y, so two separate first derivatives, and then we're going to be looking at three separate second derivatives. So let's start off with the first derivative with respect to x, which in this case will be negative 2x minus 5. So we take that first derivative with respect to x and then set it equal to 0 to solve for x. And in this case, we would get x equals negative 5 halves. Then we do exactly the same thing, but start with the first partial derivative with respect to y, which in this case will be negative 2y. Set equal to 0 gives us y equals 0. So what this means is we have one critical point to consider, which is the point negative 5 halves, 0. So our x value and our y value that we got by taking the first partial derivatives, set equal to 0, and then solving. So once we have our critical points to consider, we could have one or more, then we start looking at our second derivatives. So first we'll let a equal the first derivative with respect to x, second derivative with respect to x, evaluated at negative 5 halves, 0. So if we take the derivative of f sub x with respect to x, we'll get negative 2. So there's no variables left. We don't really have to evaluate anything. b is equal to the first derivative with respect to x, second derivative with respect to y, again evaluated at this critical point, but f sub x, y. So we're still looking at f sub x and taking the derivative of this function with respect to y, which will be 0. And then c will be equal to the first derivative with respect to y, second derivative with respect to y evaluated at that critical point, and f sub y, y will be the first, this derivative of negative 2y with respect to y, so we get negative 2. So in this, in this case, each of these values, all of our variables are gone. We don't actually have to do any substitution and evaluation. We have our values for a, c, and b. So we can look at evaluating a, c minus b squared which in this case will be negative 2 times our value for c, which is also negative 2, minus b squared, which is 0, which in this case will give us a result of 4, which is greater than 0. So we look at this result, ac minus b squared, compare that to 0, which tells us we either have a maximum or a minimum. So the next thing to look at is our value for a, which again in this case is equal to negative 2. Since that result is less than 0, that tells us that f of negative 5 halves comma 0 is a local maximum because ac minus b squared is greater than 0 and a is less than 0. And then we could also find our maximum function value, f of negative 5 halves 0, by plugging negative 5 halves and 0 back into the original function. And if we do, this, do that, we would get a maximum function value of 61 fourths. Example 2 will approach things much the same way. We'll start off by finding f sub x, first partial derivative with respect to x, which will be 2x minus 6. We'll set that result equal to 0 and solve to get x equals 3. Then we'll take f sub y, or take the first partial derivative with respect to y to get 2y plus 18. Setting that equal to 0 will give us a result of y equals negative 9. So again, we have just one critical value, critical point to consider here, which is 3 comma negative 9.
So we'll again calculate those three different second derivatives. Here f sub xx will be 2. f sub xy will be equal to 0 again. And c, which is f sub yy, will be equal to positive 2. So again, there's no variables left in these second derivatives. If we get a constant function, there's nothing to substitute or evaluate. So we just have those three values. We can plug them into that expression ac minus b squared, which in this case will give us 2 times 2 minus 0 squared, which gives us positive 4, which is again greater than 0. So since that result is something positive, we either have a maximum or minimum to determine which one. We look at our value for a, which in this case is 2, which is greater than 0, which implies that our point f of 3, negative 9, is a local minimum. And then to get that minimum function value, we would go back to the original function plug in x equals 3, y equals negative 9, and evaluate to get a minimum function value of negative 93. So in these first two examples, we only came up with one critical point for each function to consider, meaning we'll have at most one maximum, one minimum, one saddle point. In other problems, if we end up with multiple critical points to evaluate, then we might have two maximums, a maximum and a minimum. Um, and then again, we just always need to keep in mind there's that case of saddle points. So even though we find a critical point, it could turn out that that point isn't a maximum or a minimum.